Hello and welcome. My name is Gauri and I'd like to invite you to join us on a series of videos on the topic of ratios. Mm -hmm. So what's a ratio? In a nutshell, a ratio is just a fraction. In this video, I hope to introduce you to the precise definition of ratios and also the notation. We'll also discuss some easy examples in which the word ratio is used. In the subsequent videos, we'll, we'll apply the definition that we learn in this video and solve a variety of problems on ratios. Let's start by taking a look at two photos of our cats. This is Titan and this is Comet. You've probably already noticed that they're really not two different photos. The second one is simply an enlarged image of the first photo. Each image is a rectangle with two dimensions which we may call the width and the height. Say we pick a unit of length such as millimeters or centimeters or inches and then we measure out the width and the height of each of the images. Surely the width and height numbers of the first image would be different from the width and the height measured out for the second image. And yet, there is a relationship between the height and the width for these two images. Since I enlarged the photos correctly, I can tell you that the width of each image is one and a half times its height. Let's write that out as a math equation. Width equals 3 over 2 times height. We may also rewrite the above equation as width over height equals 3 over 2. So for the first image, if you take its width and height and calculate the fraction width over height, it will be exactly equal to the fraction 3 over 2. Same thing for the second image, width over height will be exactly the same as 3 over 2. What I am emphasizing here is that for each image, the width divided by its height is exactly equal to 3 over 2. In contrast, say we computed the quantity width minus height for each image. Then the width minus height for the first image will not be the same as the width minus height computed for the second image. So this is the concept underlying the topic of ratios. Sometimes two quantities must be compared by considering the fraction of one quantity over another quantity or said differently, one quantity divided by another quantity. Let's now summarize this dis discussion and then learn the precise definition of ratios. On the last slide, we had this equation, width over height equals 3 over 2. This equation expresses a relationship between width and height. Now I wish to teach you a new language to say this exact same information. Here's the new language. The ratio of the width to the height is 3 to 2. Here I have written 3 colon 2 and we read this as 3 to 2. So what we were previously calling the fraction width over height, now I would like you to use the fancy phrase, the ratio of the width to the height. Reiterating, the phrase, the ratio of the width to the height is the same as saying the fraction width over height. Next, the equality symbol, as you already know, is the same as writing the word is. Finally, the fraction 3 over 2 in a new language of ratios is simply 3 to 2, written as 3 colon 2. Reiterating, 3 colon 2 is the same as the fraction 3 over 2. With that said, the sentence the ratio of the width to height is 3 to 2 is conveying the same information as the equation width over height equals 3 over 2. So in this new language of ratios, I can tell you that for both the images of the cats that you saw, the ratio of the width to its height is 3 to 2. In another situation, you may not have width and height to compare, but you may have two quantities A and B that you want to compare by looking at the fraction A over B. In other words, you may want to talk about the ratio of A to B. 
The cat photo example motivates the following precise definition of ratios. Suppose that A and B are two non-zero fractions. The ratio of A to B, denoted by A colon B, and read as A to B, is defined as the complex fraction A over B. We process this definition as follows. The phrase the ratio of A to B is the same as the fraction A over B. Furthermore, this notation A colon B is exactly the same as the fraction A over B. The reason I have written complex fraction here in the definition is because A and B could themselves be fractions. Then A over B would be one fraction over another fraction, which you know is called a complex fraction. Before we move on to the next slide, take a minute or two to learn and memorize this definition of ratio. The language of ratios is useful and is in fact used in many contexts. If you have the precise definition memorized, then every time you encounter the word ratio, you will know how to interpret it correctly without any confusion. On this slide, I have the definition of ratio up on top for easy reference. Let's now focus on this information below. These days, many widescreen monitors feature a 16 to 9 screen. YouTube also uses a 16 to 9 ratio for its video player. Sometimes this ratio is called an aspect ratio. This means that for the image of the screen, the ratio of the width to height is 16 to 9. If you prefer to see that in a math equation, it would be width over height equals 16 over 9. Now this piece of information was important for me to know since I then prepared my slides in the 16 to 9 ratio. Here's another sentence that uses the language of ratios. The ratio of the number of chairs to the number of tables is 7 to 2. Using a precise definition of ratio written here at the top, we can translate this English sentence into a math equation. The phrase the ratio of the number of chairs to the number of tables is by definition the fraction the number of chairs over the number of tables. The word is becomes the equal sign. The symbol 7 to 2 by definition is the fraction 7 over 2. One quick comment. The sentence the ratio of the number of chairs to the number of tables is 7 to 2 this is a little bit too long. So oftentimes, you may find in word problems the following shorthand version. The ratio of chairs to tables is 7 to 2. Okay, two quick comments on this slide. This colon notation used in A to B is due to the philosopher and mathematician Leibniz. You will see his name when you take a calculus class in high school or college. Leibniz is one of the co-inventors of calculus. He introduced this colon notation that we continue to use today. The concept of ratios existed before Leibniz, but this colon notation is what Leibniz introduced. Another comment is that in the definition of ratios, even though I have, I have said that A and B are two non-zero fractions, A and B could actually be any uh, non-zero real numbers. They don't have to be restricted to fractions. We can still define ratios when A and B are non-zero real numbers. We'll explore that in a future video. This video is for an audience who has at this point encountered only fractions. And so for now, it's fine to think of A and B in this definition as fractions. Okay, that's it for today. See you soon in another video. Until then, have fun with math and remember to memorize the definition of ratios before you move on to the next video. Thank you.